Hi friends, Krista here from Books and Jams, and it's time for another reading vlog because I haven't done one in a really long time. So I thought, here it is, Friday, I just got done with work, I just went to a book sale, which I'll show you some clips of, and got a couple books, and I have a few fun things planned for tomorrow. So I thought, why don't I bring you along for the weekend and do another reading vlog weekend. I am participating right now in the fall readathon, hashtag fall readathon on Instagram, which is just four days, read eight hours over the four days, and I'm totally participating. I am not into spooky books, so I'm not doing any of the spooky readathons. I'm just reading what I'm already reading. <laughs> Let me show you real quick what I just purchased at this book sale. The books were a little more expensive than a library book sale. They, the paperbacks were $3 a piece, but still that's really cheap and I found some in wonderful condition. So I purchased two books in the Jasper Ford Thursday Next series. Um, I have books one, three, and four, and I found books two and five. So I have Lost in a Good Book and Thursday Next, the first among sequels. So I'm so excited. I have all five books in the series now. I think there's five books in the series. I'm pretty sure there's five books in the series. Here's hoping that I like it because <laughs> now I have the whole series. Um, I also found a book by Emily St. John Mandel that I had never heard of before, Last Night in Montreal. This is the author of Station Eleven and I loved Station Eleven. I didn't even read the back of this one because it's in perfect condition and it's Emily St. John Mandel. So I, I can't tell you what this one's about. And also I've just recently seen people reading this. Maybe Katie from Life Between Words is reading this. The Physic Book of Deliverance Dane um, by Catherine Howe. Kate Howe, she has a YouTube channel. Um, this is Catherine Howe and I believe this is about um, some connection to the Salem witch trials, if I'm correct. I don't know. But it's, again, in beautiful condition. It's October. I remember someone that I follow reading it, so I grabbed it. And then I picked up a Newbery uh, winner. This is Julie of the Wolves by Jean Craighead George. And this is about an Eskimo girl who is connected to wolves in some way. So there you have it. There's the five books mini book haul right off the bat today. Um, I have nothing planned tonight, so I'm prepared to go inside, put comfy pants on, make some soup for dinner, and read, 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 read for the rest of the night. That's it. Very exciting Friday night. I have such a busy day planned tomorrow that I'm totally fine with hanging out at home tonight. So... I will check in later and let you know at least what I'm reading tonight and um, how it's going. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, dinner has been eaten. Comfy clothes have been acquired. Cozy blanket is here, as is a cup of tea <laughs> and a candle, which I'm not going to lift up. But I am down for the count. My main priority this weekend is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I heard her speak last Monday. She was awesome. I couldn't get any clips or anything because it was really dark in that room. They just put a light up on the stage, so the lighting was horrible and it wasn't going to work. But here's a picture of us. <laughs> I did get this signed by her, and I bought Men We Reaped while I was there. It was really good to hear her talk about this before I started reading it. Um, I had some intimidations about this because in particular the mother in the story I kept hearing from people she's just awful and I'm not a huge fan of unlikable characters I mean I can read them but I want something to root for so hearing her process of working through her emotions towards Leone um, was really interesting and just hearing her process of how she writes um what made me very excited. This is more literary than books that I typically pick up and that in a in a way was a bit intimidating to me as well but I'm finding that I really love it. Uh, she's definitely a fantastic writer. I'm loving it. It is a little bit slower. It's not quite as much of a page turner as other books that I've read this October but I am still really enjoying it. So I am at chapter seven which is page let me see. 
I'm right about halfway through right now. I'm on page 143 and there's like just over 300 pages, I think. So I'm just almost halfway through. I should be able to finish this by Sunday night. That is the goal. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have to read tomorrow, but if I need something different, I also have two others. I'm reading Cranford for Victober and I'm reading The Air Affair by Jasper Ford, which is so weird. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time getting into the flow of this one. I'm not very far, maybe 50 pages or so, but it's weird. I now have all five books in the series, but I'm I'm hoping to get into the hang of that one. Um, and then on my drive tomorrow, I will be listening to The Count of Monte Cristo. So we'll talk about that later. So now it's time for me to get back to reading, drinking my tea, and I will let you know how far I get and what I'm thinking about seeing Unburied Sing. We just met Richie, who is the third perspective in this book. So we have Leone, who is the mother, and Jojo, her young son, who's about 13, I think, or just turned 14, young teenage son. And we have both of their perspectives. And it's basically a road trip novel. They're headed to Parchment Prison, where Jojo's father is just being released, uh, so we've been on the road. We just arrived at the prison. And when we get there, we meet Richie, who is a ghost of a young boy who uh, served time at Parchment Prison, which was ultimately like another place where they re-enslaved black young men. So not only young men, old men too. Horrible place. We're learning a bit about Parchment and we're I just met Richie for the first time, so I'm excited to get into his perspective and learn a little bit about parchment. We'll see where it goes from here. It is a relatively chilly fall day, and I've got my tea, and I am about to head out with my friends. I'm at their house to go to an apple orchard for a little while, ride a hayride, pick some apples, take some pretty pictures of pumpkins and drink apple cider. I can't eat the apple cider donuts because no sugar. Day 83, go me. But I'm excited for an adventure. Be excited for some cool pictures. <laughs> green but we found some red ones yay I got my bag of apples they're kind of expensive so I'm not getting that many but it's so pretty such a beautiful day um, they were pretty picked over but we found some that's kind of fun all right I am making my way over to this book festival which closes in 20 minutes <laughs> technically. So we're going to see what's still open, what's still available, what's even here. This is the second annual RVA Book Lover Fest. Here we go. Um, unfortunately, that was a bit of a bust. <laughs> I bought some candles, so I'll show you those in a little bit so that I can talk about that company. Um, but basically all the author tables were shut down and I'm not really sad about it because I didn't really know any of the authors that were going to be here so I just was going to check it out anyway but how hard is it to like take a look at an author's book and then say no I don't want to buy that <laughs> right in front of their face that is not very fun I had to do that once before they started shutting everything down but Next year is the year I will officially check out the RVA Book Lover Fest. This year didn't really happen, but that's okay. Now I get to go home and read. Yay! Okay, before I get going, I just wanted to show you these candles. 
Um, the first one I got is called Sweet Apple Bark. Oh, the company is Waxy Wenches Candle Company. I will put the link to their website and their Facebook page down in the description. Um, the guy was really nice. He and his wife make these themselves. It's 100% soy candles. And they sent all of them. They had a ton of different options. I discovered I liked the woodsy ones. They had them kind of set up from florals to woodsy to sweet. And I do not like super sweet candles, which is why I don't like pumpkin scented candles. But this is called Sweet Apple Bark. And it's in the woodsy section and it has an apple but it also has like almost like a cedar kind of a scent I'm not exactly sure I could probably look up on the bottom but I really liked that one and then he said this was their most popular one and it's dark shadow path <laughs> and it is very um oh, I can't get the lid off it is very woodsy but there is a, a faint sweetness to it I don't know, but I could smell it all day. It smells so good. I really like it. And so they were having a deal. These, well, two of these four ounce jars. I think these are four ounce jars. Two of these for $10. Um, so I thought that was pretty good. I am trying to burn down some of my candles that I have right now so that I can start to burn some brand new ones, but I might have to burn one of these this evening because it smells so good. Then I got two free tea lights, which are just random scents for liking their Facebook page and signing up for their mailing list. So, gotta love a good candle. Don't gotta love showing up at a book festival 15 minutes before they're closing. Eh, it is what it is. All I know is that I am super hungry. <laughs> we didn't really eat lunch at the apple orchard because the lines were so, so long and we were too busy like picking apples and letting the kids run up and down the hill and um, the kids rode on the hayride. I didn't do any of, well, I picked apples, but I didn't go on the hayride. I just kind of hung out and relaxed. It was so beautiful up there. Um, but now I'm pretty hungry and it's four o'clock. So I'm going to go home and have an early dinner. I might have a second dinner later, but I'm going to go home and eat. Yay! Hi friends, I am back in my reading chair. I just grabbed a bite to eat, put away some groceries. I had to stop at the grocery store. And I'm sitting down to finish up Sing Unburied Sing. I have about 60 pages to go. Uh, it really ramped up in intensity last night. Um, and I just wanted to say, something that people told me before I started this is that I wasn't going to like the mother. Or I just got that impression from people's reviews and she is pretty messed up but what I love in books is people dealing with grief and Jasmine Moore does a really good job of showing that Leonie the mother is not dealing with her grief and that's a big reason she's kind of hiding her grief by doing drugs and completely absorbing herself in her relationship and is kind of horrible to her children but at the same time I feel a lot of empathy towards Leone and I can see where she wants to be better and also why she's choosing at times not to be. She just feels very real to me and I love that. Um, so yeah, she's not a great mom. Yeah, she makes me frustrated at times, but I also have a lot of empathy for her as a character and, and I like that. If there's going to be an unlikable character, I want to feel something towards them or have some kind of understanding about them as well or that they need to be like a straight up villain because that's kind of fun too but um, she's definitely not a villain she is definitely pretty messed up though anyways 60 pages I'm gonna finish this um, but what I was gonna do first even though this room is a mess I was gonna clean it first but I think I should show you this is the chair I almost always film from my little Ikea, one of those that kind of rocks a little bit. I forget the name of it because I can't pronounce anything from Ikea. But it's, um, this is the chair that I sit in. Next to me is my keyboard covered in a Dominican sarong thing um, because it gets dusty. Um, there's some things that need to get hung on the wall, which is, are not hung. Um, I have some books. This is how I film. Here is... A little stool that's usually what I um, sit on when I play. There's the bookshelf I often film from and I'm selling that roasting pan on a Facebook yard sale 
And then I have, I'm gonna flip this around, hold on. Okay, so there's the bookshelf I normally film from. Then I have this other bookshelf, which is a hot mess right now. But I usually put, um, so on this bookshelf, as you may know, there's sequels on the top, Fiction Guild books on this big shelf here, and then other books that have been sent to me and Book of the Month Club picks. But every month I put on top of this one, uh, my monthly TBRs. So Count of Monte Cristo, I'm re listening to. These other three books are books that I'm in the, um, hopefully going to get to before the end of the month. Other books that were on other months TBRs that I just haven't put away yet because maybe I still want to read them. And then when I finish books for the month, they go in this little cubby here. I've got notebooks and yarn under my feet there. <laughs> yarn, some like mementos and pictures and things, some Christian nonfiction, photo books and church books and piano music and a junk corner and my little stand with my candle my notes for my book that I'm reading right now so now when you see me sitting in this chair you'll know what I'm looking at <laughs> I don't know if that's important to you or not but I kind of like seeing that when other people share more of their homes I am not an interior decorator so nothing is ever going to be like magazine worthy but it's comfortable and cozy and I like that so um the plan for the night I'm in for the night I already switched into my comfy pants I'm gonna finish Sing Unburied Sing and then I need to get up and kind of do the dishes and um make something to bring to church tomorrow for our meal after the baptism service and like clean up in my room I'm in the middle of the process of switching my closet from summer to fall winter so I started that this morning and I need to work on that a little bit more and get my room cleaned up and straightened, do some laundry, all that fun things. But here I am in for the night. What a life. <laughs> I will update you later um, when I finish Sing Unburied Sing and what I'm going to pick up next. Talk to you soon. It is a rainy day. I am so excited. Church is over. I'm about to head home and put on comfy clothes and read in the rain. Not standing in the rain, but with the rain, I guess. <laughs> um, we had such a fun service today. We had baptisms when we had seven people get baptized. And it was also a party, a birthday party for my church, which is now five years old. Very exciting. I absolutely love my church and the people there. I love working with the kids. I love meeting new people. I love watching people publicly say that they are following Christ through the act of baptism. I just, I love it all. I love it all. So I didn't take too much video or pictures or anything, but I put in a couple just so that you can see my church experience. I had to put my hair up because number one, I'm kind of thrilled that my hair is long enough to put up like in a little clip thing. Love that. And number two, I got hot from running all around and dealing with kids. And I wore boots today, which make me feel like awesome. <laughs> but also they're kind of hard to walk a lot in and my feet are tired. So it's time for cozy socks, cozy tea, cozy clothes, and a cozy read. Let's get it done. Can I pull off yellow? I just got this cute sweater at Old Navy. It's very yellow. I'm not sure I can do it, but it's fun for fall. reading vlog goes I've pretty much failed <laughs> I haven't really told you updates on my reading so I'm gonna do that now and kind of wrap it up 
for the night, for the weekend, because it's almost time to go to bed, because I got to work early tomorrow. I did finish Sing Unburied Sing, and for a while I was debating between four or five stars, but I think I have to give it five stars, because the writing is beautiful. I have a lot of thoughts about this book. It's hard. It's very different from other things that I've read. There's ghosts. There's weird, like, spiritual or superstitious ceremony stuff at the end. Yeah, it was strange. But I was here for it, weirdly. There is a bit of language in this one, but I didn't care. It felt like authentic. Yeah, it was good. The writing was beautiful. It was different. I read this with Amanda from The Curly Reader, and we have read both of Bianca Murray's books together, and we loved her as well. Um, and we both enjoyed this one. Bianca Murray and Frederick Bachman have these one-line zingers of in their writing that I just love. These quotable like quotes that you can pull out and say, wow, that was a really beautifully written sentence. This book didn't have those kind of one-line quotes that I wanted to pull out. I want every line, the descriptions were incredible. This, it invoked all of your senses, but it was very different from what I've read before. But I still decided it deserves five stars. And maybe that's in part because I heard Jasmine speak right the day I started this. And so I think that had a big part in my enjoyment of this book. Today, I finally listened to a little bit more of The Count of Monte Cristo. I am just over halfway, which is awesome. I guess this is a better way to show it. This is all I have left. This is what I've read so far, <laughs> or listened to, I should say. Uh, I hadn't listened to that in over a week, so it felt good to jump back into that a little bit today. Then I also worked this weekend on both. Cranford and the Air Affair, which I've talked about earlier this weekend. Oof, yesterday maybe. The thing is, I'm not loving either one of these. And I, okay, let me start with Cranford. I like it. It's Victorian literature. Elizabeth Gaskell wrote North and South, which I absolutely love. It's pretty accessible. I'm not having a hard time understanding what's going on, but it's slower paced. Uh, we follow a bunch of old women who live in the town of Cranford and their lives. The chapters are almost like short stories. Not very much is going on. It's not holding my attention right now. I will definitely finish it before the end of the month. I'm on page 97 out of 187, so I have less than 100 pages to go. So I'll definitely finish this in October, but I might just kind of read a chapter or two a day and then I'm not feeling like reading it right now. Then I have The Air Affair. This is a highly loved book by a ton of people. It's surrealism. We're set, kind of feels like the past, but also the future. We're cloning and time travel are both very realistic part of this world, but all not realistic because none of, nothing that's going on in here is realistic. There was not a very good set up the world section. We kind of dive right in and learn as you go, which is fine sometimes, but this is weird. <laughs> it's so strange. I'm 124 pages in and I'm just having a hard time following it. One of the things that this book says that it's about is a kidnapping of Jane Eyre and I'm almost, oh, I guess I'm not even halfway. But I looked at a couple of reviews and they're like, that doesn't happen until the last 70 pages. I'm like, well, that's the part I'm interested in. I'm just having a hard time understanding the world. I'm having a hard time getting into the characters. I don't know who Thursday Next is. There are just so many weird things and it's very literature heavy. So this world is, how did they, how did they world, how did they word this. Literature is taken very, very seriously. England is a virtual police state where an ant can get lost in a Wordsworth poem, literally. Militant ba Bacon, Bacon, Baconians heckle performances of Hamlet, and forging Byronic verse is a punishable offense. 
all this is business as usual for Thursday nights. So like there's just a lot of references to a lot of literature that I am not familiar with. Maybe I would have used to be familiar right out of college when I was re reading a bunch more of these things, but it's been a long time. I'm like, oh, that name is familiar, but it doesn't really mean anything to me other than I know the name. So I, I, I'm also kind of feeling like I want to put this down, but that's not going to help me want to continue reading. I might slowly work my way through this. The problem is I have, this is a series is it going to get better? People who've read this, does it get better? Tell me. So now the problem is, I'm going to continue to work through these throughout the month of October, hopefully finish them. But I don't know what I want to pick up. <laughs> Left on my TBR for the month are The Immortalists, The Invention of Wings, My Cousin Rachel. Actually, I think I might pick up My Cousin Rachel. I might be... A I might be in the mood for a De Maurier. I've only ever read Rebecca, and it was very good. It was a long time ago that I read that, but maybe I'll pick up My Cousin Rachel. I don't know what else I want to read. <laughs> I feel like I want something fast-paced, and this was highly emotional, very sad, quite heavy at times. I might want something lighter, Maybe I should look at my series shelf. I don't know. I'll decide before the end of the night and then let you know. That's the plan. <laughs> but I also need to edit videos. I need to start editing this one. I haven't done that yet at all. But I'll decide what I'm going to read next. And I'll check back in and say goodbye in a few. It is definitely time for me to go to bed. It is about almost 11. And I have to be up a little after 5 to do my workout before going to work at 7 a.m. I did pick up my cousin Rachel tonight. I read about 20 pages. Found the title. It's always fun. Um, but I'm not sure this is what I'm in the mood for either. We shall see. I'm actually not going to have much time to read tomorrow. Because I have all four kids home that I nanny. The two oldest are usually in school, but they don't have school tomorrow. The preschooler doesn't have school either. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. So, busy, busy day. And then I am going to the hospital because my friend had a baby today. Yay! And I'm going to go hold a two-day-old baby. I cannot wait. It's going to be wonderful. I'm not going to film that. But, uh, so I need to go to bed because it's going to be a busy day. Thanks for hanging out with me this weekend. <laughs> Sorry it wasn't much of a reading vlog, but I hope that you enjoyed seeing a little taste of my life. I will be talking to you in another video very soon. <laughs> Bye.